Route to Nova. Parfour. Produit 7 by Pacificatoris. Chapter 4. Very rarely did Jake walk home alone. But, on such a day, he was about half away home, just about to cross El Camino, he turned his head to look into Harmel's motel. Jake thought he had seen Harmel in the basketball court during lunchtime, but Jake had not seen him since then. The reception area protruded from the main building and had a water wall glass window on the frontal side facing the road and the entrance door to the side. There were Venetian blinds for the windows, but if not drawn to close, which was the usual case, a passerby could see through the windows inside out, which was the case on this unusual day. Harmel was standing behind the counter, along with another receptionist, seemingly checking in a middle-aged man with a grain bear. It appeared that they were jovial in mood and just joking around for a few minutes. Then, the man signed some sort of slip and received a room key over the counter and left. Jake knocked on the aluminum panel glass door and went in. Harmel looked up and smiled awkwardly, a bit surprised, maybe. Jutting up his chin, Jake said, Yo, what up? Harmel replied, Hey? Harmel turned his head towards the receptionist and introduced her to Jake. Extending his hand in her direction, Harmel said, Hey Jake, this is Jane, a friend of mine. Inversing the motion, Harmel said to Jane, This is Jake, a buddy from the school. Jane was of the similar complexion of Harmel's. But for that skin-deep feature, she looked like a Swedish model that could be a cover girl for those fancy fashion magazines. With big sparkling emerald colored eyes, buffered by luscious eyelashes, Jane stuck her hand over the reception counter and said with a sweet smile, Hi, Jake. Nice to meet you. Jake, too, put forward his hand to meet her soft silky hand and said, Jane, nice to meet you, too. Their eyes being met and locked, Jake could not disengage from her feminine grip, enchanted by her gorgeous eyes with exotic colors. Jake almost felt as if he were being sucked into an inescapable black hole of feminine beauty. Harmel intervened. Hey, do you want to come in for some tea? Still looking into Jane's eyes, Jake autonomously answered. Yeah, sure. The wall behind the counter was draped with the thick ceiling-to-ceiling -ceiling velvet curtain. Harmel pulled aside the curtain just enough to reveal a door that lead to Harmel's abode. The door led to a passageway that had shoe racks on both sides. Harmel and Jane took off their shoes and put on their slippers. Pointing to the general area packed with semi-disposable motel slippers, Harmel said, Jake, you can put them on. Jake nodded and complied with the request. Harmel opened the door at the end of the passageway, which led to the living room, with a typical middle-class layout. Harmel sat down on the long couch. Jake followed suit. Harmel picked up a remote lying on the coffee table and clicked through dozens of channels available on the cable. Harmel settled on MTV, which was airing a hip-hop video, where fly girls with scanty bikinis were twerking near the pool. Jane, who had disappeared behind the curtain of beads on one end of the living room, reappeared with the tray of treats. She gently put the tray on the coffee table and gingerly sat next to Harmel. So, on the three-seat sofa, Harmel sat in the middle, Jake on the left and Jane on the right. Jane graciously reached over to grab a porcelain teapot and poured Earl Grey into three teacups. Jane said, Jake, please help yourself with sugar and cream and the biscuits. Jake said, Thank you, Jane. There was a small bowl containing sugar cubes and a creamer on the tray, as well as a candy bowl brim with different types of English biscuits. While Harmel was drooling over the fly girls on MTV, Jake was eyeing Jane's every move. Jake was so impressed with the smooth ladylike motions just exhibited in front of him. He did not have enough courage to look over Harmel to peer into her beautiful eyes again, 
but he did manage to examine her silky slender hands, manicured to the perfection in the color of amber red. He was also intrigued by the dramatic contrast of complexion between the back of her hand and the palm. Harmel sipped on the cup of tea, straight. Jake sipped on it too and was taken by how strong it was, like espresso. He thought about adding some sugar and cream, but refrained from it, thinking it unmanly. So, he took it straight as well. After watching a half dozen of music videos, Harmel suddenly said, I gotta make a round. Come on, Jake. Jake promptly followed suit, saying goodbye to Jane and catching her pretty eyes, just one more time before leaving. Batman. There was a narrow walkway, sandwiched between the row of rooms and the parking lot, which went all the way to the end of the building. The room at the end was a motel version of the suite room, which sometimes served as a recreational room for Harmel and his gang. However, there was a room, one prior to the suite that Harmel knocked on. The bearded guy came to the door and let Harmel and Jake in. Harmel sat on the wooden chair in the corner, and Jake, one next to the door. There was a small round table in between. As stepping into the kitchenette, the man asked Harmel, Hey, do you want a beer? Harmel replied, Sure thing. The man brought three beers from the mini refrigerator and laid two on the table. Then, the man lazily sat on the bed, his back against the headboard. As he popped open the beer, the bearded man asked, so, Amel, who's your friend there? Extending his hand towards Jake, Harmel said, Oh yeah, this is Jake. And facing Jake, Harmel said, Jake, this is Hobo Joe. The man stretched out his arm for a handshake, which Jake reciprocated. The man, named Hobo Joe, turned to Harmel and said, Oh, yeah, the stuff you asked for, the Gangji flower. He reached into the army duffel sack, placed on the floor, next to the right side of the bed. He grabbed a Ziploc bag, about half filled with weed, and tossed it to Harmel, which Harmel deftly caught in his left hand. Harmel unzipped it and smelled it. Harmel said, Phew. This is some strong shit. Hobo Joe said, Yeah, ain't it? 100% pure Ganji. From his breast pocket, Harmel pulled out a wallet, which contained a slim pack for rolling paper. He pulled out one sheet of paper and rolled it in a smooth and swift motion. He then lit it and gave it a puff. He held the smoke in for at least a few seconds to let the weed seep into his body and exhaled very slowly. Harmel said, Man, this is some good shit. Harmel then smoked it one more time and passed it onto Jake, saying, Jake. This is some good shit. Jake took the weed and gave a good inhale and said, This is some good shit. En route to Nova. Parfum. Thank you for your viewership. Produced by Pacificatoris. <laughs>